Dr. President, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when they first came to see me, to be honest, I have rather reservations whether to come or not. One, because it's a fasting month. But Dr. Henry knows, or rather, uh, Dr. Christian told my PA that he can come even after nine. And that's the reasons why I accepted. But secondly, because I don't want to interpret my presence as something that may not be good for you. The reason is simple. Our people has been so much politicized. We are being defined by the afflations, the party afflations that we have chosen. And that exactly, I believe, is our weakness. We don't see our friend as Mumagun, Akadazan, Dosun, Murud, because they, are, they belong to that party. Sometimes we see them as enemies because we, they don't come in the same party, or they are in the, not in the same party with us. You know, so I told myself that I will accept to come, and by, I will not talk about politics, but you know, politician is good in saying things but doing other things. So if for any reasons I do touch on politics, please blame the politician in me, not because I'm on Bogun. Yeah. That is our problem. Our political problems, our party problem has become the reason for us to undermine each other. In fact, if I were you, and I beg you to say, to think about it, that should be a reason for us to unite. And that's how we should look at ourselves. We should not be unduly influenced by events that are taking place outside our show. We, Sabahan, must stand firm to ensure that Sabahan remain as they are. And this is where the Momogun National Congress can help. It's high time for us to unite. It's okay. If you want to be in PKR, AMNO, whatever the party name it, it's your business, it's your choice. But you should, when we must remain united as Mamagun. And I beg you and I hope we will wake up to the reality of politics that eventually it's not so much of what party you are in, it's about what contribution have you given to your community. I think that should be your that should be our focus. So, having said that, I have a couple of things that I want to propose. I just want to share with mine. In fact, this proposal actually, I have actually proposed it over 30 years ago when I was a district officer of Tuaran. That is, I did propose to the government that we should create a land bank for native titles. You know, our problem is we keep on losing native titles through various means. One, conversions to CL. Two, somebody is smart enough to create, to find a nominee, and that native title will be handed to him via a nominee. And then nominee will have another arrangement with the real buyer. But three, actually the main reason is because we need money. Natives need money. They need to send their children to universities and they need money. So they pledge their native titles to whoever they are. Now I propose the perhaps the, the government through the creation of a statutory body should be set up where natives who are desperately in need of money, say for education, can pledge their native title to that bank or rather authority with an option for them to reclaim it or to take it back upon the completion of the studies of their children. So with that, there is no need to sell your native titles to, you know, to, to Ahlong or whatever name that you so what happened? Two, in the event that you cannot or you don't have enough money to buy back your title or to pay your loan, 
I have suggested that the first option to buy should be given over to the relatives of the person who had taken the loan. The whole idea is to ensure that uh, the, the land is within the possession of the family that got it in the first place. I, I want you to ponder about it. Third, only after the debtor cannot pay back the loan and none of his relatives are able to pay and get the title, only then it should be, in my opinion, auction among natives. First, within those who are living in that area where the land is, 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 is placed, and of course, to the natives in general. So people may ask, why do you want to deny non-natives of this land? The reason is simple. We are called natives because we have land. We possess land. We are called the sun because we own kabun. That's why. If you don't own kabun, it's difficult for me to define you as a momogun. But the problem is, slowly we are losing land inheritance due to various circumstances. So that's the proposal that I want you to think. It may be subject to a lot of fine-tuning, but I think it's worth looking into it. Two, I should also propose to the government, when I say government, that includes me, lah, but, <laughs> but it's good that I say it here, I think there's a real need for the government to relook at the so-called power of attorney policy. Rules need to be tightened. At the moment, PA, as it is more popularly known, power of attorney, is being abused as a backdoor way of getting or stealing native lands from the natives. You know, I tell you a story. Statistically, over 90% of all the so-called land grab in Sabah came about of uh, power of attorney. Very serious case. What happened? Another native will ask all the natives in his city, in his kampong to apply for a land. Then marla kita pohon, lima belas ikar seturang. So semua nora tanda tangan ni nora native mana? Pandai tuliskan. So everybody cap jari. After some time, then untung kita then ada balak pula dalam tanah itu then. Jadi ada saya sudah suruh orang pi ambil tu balak. So minggu depan terima lima ratus ringgit satu orang dah. So next week all the applicants of the fifteen acres pergi belai raya get their five hundred ringgit each. Sekali lagi tamprin. Everybody happy. Apalagi sekarang tidak sudah amanah saham tu lima ratus dapat. Unknown to these people actually have just signed a PA giving him the right to deal with the land and allowing him to sell the land to another company. If the PA is also intended to allow the land application to be amalgamated and to be applied by a company. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, kadang-kadang itu kata mau boleh turi sudah, tiba-tiba berdosa masuk dalam, Rupa-rupanya syarikat asing sudah beli, sudah dapat itu tu tanah. This is our biggest problem. So cadangan saya ialah, I think there's a need kerajaan harus meneliti kembali peruntukan undang-undang bagi tujuan memperkatakan PA ini. Sebagai misalan, I would strongly suggest selagi Tanah NT atau permohonan itu belum ada geran. I think we should consider this allowing power of attorney because this is the this is the stage where a lot of our people were tricked into signing something that they didn't know what they were signing. So I leave it to you, the Momogun National Congress, to look into it. I'm not saying I'm right, but probably said this is idea that is worth considering. Why we want to protect the Momogun? 
Three. So I told this son, a lot of people are unhappy. I made a statement. I think we need this. I mean, in fact, uh, Dr. Rosib said it. I think there's a need for us to have a change of mindset. What the mindset on working, on kerja. You know, we are totally or nearly dependent on foreign labor. 80% of our plantations are Indonesians. 70% of our construction workers are Filipinos. And luckily, luckily, the state government were far-sighted enough a few years ago to decide to ban recruitment of Bangladesh workers in Sabah. Otherwise, we'll have a lot of Shahrukh Khans in our state today. <laughs> we don't realize the danger. We recruit them. We recruit the workers. So the talk is said, ah, yeah, there are like a boss around. Bodah ada orang, saya punya pakcik ada orang yang mau datang. Lapas pakcik, adik, lapas adik, entah sepupu. Soon, there will be hundreds of them here. Don't forget. With such a very, very questionable way in which citizens are, citizenships are granted, soon, the workers become citizens. And back by operation of international law, if you have been here for seven years or more, you can actually apply for permanent stay. The same way, if we go to Indonesia and seven, stay there for seven or ten years, we can too can apply for permanent stay. Actually, the reasons why they are here because, well, one, they, we need labor. And the reason why we need labor because there are not enough local who want to do that job. Saya tahulah orang cakap, aku pandai cakap, aku pandai cakap lah, aku sudah jadi menteri. I want to tell you, I am not saying this if I have not done it before. I am not ashamed to tell you that once upon a time I was a laborer. I know exactly what I am talking about. Sumbung dah cakap. It's okay, you call me Sumbung, but I want to tell you our problem in the future. If we are not willing to change our mindset and do jobs that others are doing now, trust me, we'll be flooded in no time. Mereka datang kerana ada peluang, ada ada apa tu, ada apa ada kata opportunity, ada opportunity kerana orang kita tidak mau ambil opportunity tersebut. Simple economic arithmetic. Bila kita kena tegur marah. Baju bala dia nang ada degree mana saya mau kerja di kelapa sawit. I want to tell you, in humility I said this, I was still working as a salesman long after I graduated as a lawyer. Saya tidak malu. Saya punya muka ni tebal. I am not ashamed. Why? Because I want to prove that what the Chinese can do, what others can do, I too can do. And this should be the mindset that we should emulate. I mean, I'm just giving the Chinese because they are the most hardworking people anyway. Kita tiada panas sikit, takut paitong rusak. Kerja panas, takut girlfriend nampak. I tell you, it's better that girl, yeah, it's, it's better that we embarrass ourselves in front of our girlfriend then soon. Begging other people to take us as a server for a job. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Malu itu ada banyak malu. Miskin, kita tidak perlu malu kerana miskin. Tetapi kita harus malu kalau kita tidak bekerja keras untuk mengeluarkan diri kita daripada kemiskinan. I think to me, that you should be ashamed. I'm sorry to use a harsh word, but I just want you to, to realize so that the reality of economics really sink in among our people. We need to have a total mind change in the mindset if we want to proceed. Jangan malu kerja. Don't worry, it's okay. And that I'm 
I'm uh, very happy that I think Dr. Henry has uh, pointed out that the fact that I think there's a need for a mindset. Kedua, eh, akhir sekali lah. Sorry ya. Lambat sikit. Masalah, if you put a politician on, on, the, on the stage, he won't stop talking. Right? <laughs> Education. I think we need to accept the fact that the overriding motive or the purpose of education is actually to be ourselves able to think, not merely to find a job. But at the moment, and though the government has to say, what is the king of the king? and the government has to say, what is the king My son or my daughter, please study hard so that you can find a good job. Ini the 20th century punya no philosophy. Our current philosophy in the mindset should be work hard so that when we graduate, we are able to think vividly what needs to be done. You see, I'm sorry to all the politicians, and I perhaps is included. Problem today is that we have lost the art of thinking. We didn't think, we don't think anymore. We are so busy with work and with work that we have stopped to think. And it is our loss of the ability to think that actually have made us make a lot of wrong decisions. My plea to you is that let's educate our children so that they are able to think for themselves what needs to be done. Eventually, trust me, it's not so much that who you are. But I think we need to realize that the world is fast changing. If we don't change or we don't tag along, no amount of effort will be able to save us in the world that obviously is going to happen in the next, perhaps, millennium. It will be Yes, we will have a big problem in adapting to changing circumstances. In conclusions, may I once again perhaps uh, remind myself and all of you the few points that I hope that the National Congress, the Momogun National Congress will be able to perhaps to, to, to think about. One is the creation of an authority in a form of a land bank for native titles. And the reason is simply because we want to save native lands. Just to let you know, I'm from Ranau. Over 50% of all the title land in Kundasang has gone to the outsiders. Over 50%. When I say outside, non-locals. If you can still sleep tonight after hearing this, I'll be surprised. Over 50% of all title land in Kundasang have been bought over by non Kundasangite or non Ranorian. Two, I think there's a need for the government to relook at the laws governing power patni. Again, this has something to do with the uh, lane issue that I have uh, said. And the reason is simple. I think it should not be exploited as a backdoor way of land grab involving native titles. Three, the most important thing, I, mindset. Gentlemen, ladies, there's nothing wrong with us, trust me. We are as good as anyone else in the world. The Momogun is as good as anyone else in the world. Trust me. But we need to have a change of mindset. And words should be followed by actions. Jangan pandai bercakap tapi kerja tiada. Let's do it. And I'm very glad that the Momogun here is set up basically basically to do that. And finally, I think I think we should incalculate to our this uh, novel idea to our, to our children that education is intended to make us stronger not only to enable us to find jobs. If we put them, if we educate them rightly, trust me, 
we don't need to find a job. We will create our own jobs. And that basically sums up when you have economic power, you have political power. You need not simple arithmetic. So, kalau satu pun kerusi kita tidak ada. Tapi kalau ekonomi kita pegang, every election people will knock our door. That is our power. So, terima kasih, Sir Mr. Klein. I would like to stop here by thanking once again the uh, Dato Henry Nuas and all his members of his committee for inviting me and for those who, who have wasted your precious time listening to me, or grumbling, my grumbling. But I want to assure you that I really mean it. I really want to see how people really succeed in life. Terima kasih. God bless you and enjoy the evening.